Wow. Wow, 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 guys. Um, hi, this is your girl, Takayla. I am so excited um, to talk to you all tonight. I truly do not have any real notes. I have a couple bullet points to the side that I do want to make um, sure that I mention in this video, um, talking about singleness and focus and really what's the point of it all, right? Like, what's the point of singleness? What's the point of being single? Oh, we just want to get out of it. We just want to hurry up and get married to our God or date spouse. And look, we're tired of being tired, okay? And we just want what we want. It's our husbands. It's our wives. And we want them now. Amen? I get all of that. Um, but today, we're going to talk about singleness. The whole point of it, and I feel that this is one question that while being single, one should truly ask themselves over and over and over and over again, what's the point of it all? And I'm going to talk about um, singleness in a different way. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I was reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13 of course um verse starting at verse 4 through 8 love suffers long and is kind love does not envy love does not parade itself it is not puffed up it does not behave rudely it does not seek its own it's not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures Woo! <laughs> that word right there jesus help endures all things love like that real godly love never fails i was sitting here with the bible open just kind of looking at that like man what is the point of it all? Like singleness, the point of love, the point of marriage. Like what is the point of it all? And I have come to the conclusion that the point of it all is for the will of God. It's for the glory of God. And it's to get a well done at the end of your race. It's for nothing else. It's not for, as the Bible says, self-seeking. It's not for what I want. It's what God wants. It's not for who I want. It's who God wants or who God has for me. Trust me. It's not for what car I want, what, what house I want. Those things are only pluses as you're walking along the pathway and the will of God that God has laid out for you, the plans that he has for you. But I feel that so many times we focus on the who, the what, the when, the where's more than we focus on the why. And the why is for the glory of God. Why am I going for the glory of God? Why does this person leave me for the glory of God? Why did I have to get married to this person for the glory of God? Why did I ha that not work out for the glory of God? Why did I go through this for the glory of God? Our whole entire life is for the glory of God. And I feel that if we are singles and we truly don't grasp or understand that concept, then we will go into marriage with the wrong mindset. We will go in there. Like I said, kissing. Woo, Jesus, Lord knows I'm overdue for a kiss. <laughs> Do y'all hear me? Your girl is overdue. Okay, well, let me stay focused. All of that kissing, hugging, rubbing, that making love, that intimacy, holding hands, going out. This is my wife. We're going to have game night with the fellas and the girls. Everybody coming over. Movie night. We're going to have fun. All of this mock Olympics, being silly in the backyard, cool games, paintball, uh, raising beautiful children, blah, blah. All of these things are great even some of it, fellowship with other married people, that's even godly. But at the end of the day, the whole entire aspect of your marriage, the whole entire aspect of your singleness, the whole entire aspect, I feel, of a true believer, somebody who's really after the heart of God, should be to please him and for his glory. All those other things are great. Some of them may even be godly. 
But at the end of our journey, the thing that we should want to hear above it all is well done, thy good and faithful servant. So I want to talk about singleness, um, singleness and focus. And just as a single, the things that we're supposed to be focusing on, even before we say I do, right? That day is if God has placed marriage into your heart and he has placed a desire for a spouse in your heart. You may even know who it is. He has placed this in your heart. Then it's going to come to pass. But we should not be so focused on that thing, that person, getting married, that specific date, all of this stuff, more than we're focused on the glory and the will of God for our lives. The presence of God communion with God all of these things come above our status if we're single or we're married or we're unmarried whatever communion with him time with him him molding and making us for our marriage making us for the person that we're one day going to be married to and that's for life If you do it God's way, that's for life. That don't change when you upset. That don't change. And I know I talked about this um, to the women in this segment that I have called the Beatitudes to Becoming a Wife. And I talk about in the first video, I believe it was about honor. And I talked about how one day my mom made me mad. It was something so stupid about a song that she was like, oh, Minnie Rippleton. I was like, I'm going to look, I'm still going to sing it. (laughs) I dedicate this to my husband, boo, period. But anyway, I was like, mom, I'm going to sing this song, Minnie Rippleton, loving you and I'm gonna dedicate that to my husband and um she was like well you're not married now so why are you gonna do that you don't need to be having no men lusting and that, 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 that. I was like mama regardless if somebody lusting for me singing a song then they already have lust in their heart so I'm gonna sing my song and I'm gonna be free from all of that and she was like well not not end up making me upset I'm like man this is so stupid I'm 28 years old I was 27 at the time but still look it don't matter I'm like I, uh, I'm 28 years old I can sing this song if I want to honey I'm not cursing and doing nothing wild and crazy out here naked bouncing my butt around on stuff to let me sing this song now and um at the end of the day we got into a little art not a real argument you know just kind of me getting upset walking away like man whatever i'm still singing this song i haven't done it yet but i'm going to i'm going to (laughs) but anyway so um that happened and about 15 minutes later i was in the kitchen making me a breakfast sandwich y'all know i'd be cooking off the frame but it was this turkey grilled turkey egg and cheese sandwich i was making for breakfast and she was sitting on the couch and i knew that she had not eaten um because we had just woke up or whatever and i was like mom you want a sandwich and she looked at me like you know kind of shocked or whatever well not really shocked but you know just kind of like i know we just got through arguing but dang you still asking me do i want some i'm like yeah me you know me us being whatever that doesn't change the fact that you're still my mom that I still have to honor you I know you haven't eat I'm over here cooking why would I not cook for you so you hungry she was like yeah end up cooking her sandwich first made my sandwich second and then we sat on the couch end up talking about it laughing watching the movie end of the story so in that sense I brought that up because just because you are married and are having problems with your spouse that does not mean that you get to walk away that does not if you're doing it God's way and you married the person God has for you that you should have made sure before you say it I do so all of these people saying oh it was the one it was baby you got to double check triple check quadruple check get confirmations ask God to confirm that in your spirit and your heart and also through their character as you're dating them but you don't get to say oh and all these vows and this covenants and all this beautiful stuff and then just walk away see i'm not i'm not trained like that and i told god i said baby one thing about it when i say i do that is for life so god if you know that this man is not gonna stick by me if you know this ain't gonna work if you know remove it and i have been engaged twice i've gotten four proposals and i have not been married yet do y'all hear me that's because the prayers of the righteous avail it much. And I told God my heart's desire was to be married once and that's it. So I have to make sure it's right because I'm too loyal and give too much to be married. And somebody talking about, oh, I want to do something different a year later. I don't have time for that. I'm not going to do it, baby. You can go sit on that couch and calm down. <laughs> You can go to the next room. That's the only separating we're going to do. And you can walk into the next room and separate for a moment. <laughs> That's it. 
But um, so I ain't doing that. So God knows that in my heart and he knows the kind of wife that I'm going to be an amazing wife. I've been preparing for it. But however, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. Godly marriages, you're doing things God's way. You don't get to walk away just because you're angry, just because somebody made you upset. And I'm still going to honor my husband. He may say, oh, baby, I don't want you to blah, blah. Look, here, we ain't going to talk about that. You hungry? You want something to eat? We, we, we we're, we're adults, you know? Marriage is for godly people who I feel like have matured in their faith, have matured in life. I feel that if you are immature and you are going into a marriage and you can be 50 years old and still be immature. But I feel that if you have not grown up in God, marriage, you will not last. You just won't last in a marriage. I'm sorry. I don't want to bust anybody's bubble. And that's probably why some of you have not been allowed to get married yet. Or God has not introduced you to your God ordained spouse yet. Because you truly are not ready. You're not ready. Now there is a timing when God brings you together. And sometimes you got to hurry up and get ready. <laughs> because he's like, yo, your time up. I done gave you eight years, nine years. You done had enough time. It's over for it. I'm done. Here go your wife. Here go your husband. But at the end of the day, that's what I want to talk about. Don't allow God to bring you your spouse and you're undone. Don't allow him to say time is up. Here she go. Here he go. And you're truly not ready, even after all of this time. And the reason why I feel that some of you, some of us are not ready when the person comes is because the things that you were supposed to be focusing on in your singleness, you spent it focusing on the time that the person would come and you spent it focusing on when am I going to get married? Is this person it? Is that person it? And drive yourself up a wall instead of being in the presence of God instead of allowing him to mold you instead of serving others instead of dying to your flesh and to yourself I saw a video the other day and it was really good and this man said miserable singles make miserable spouses and I would like to add a miserable marriage comes from miserable individuals it's not the covenant or the institution of marriage. It's the people. It's the people. I want to define the word single to you. Single defines as unmarried. Only one. Wow. Not one of several, but only one. Mm, mm, mm. I want to define the word whole. Whole defines as in an undamaged state. A thing that is complete in itself, in one piece. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. In an undamaged state, a thing that is complete in itself, in one piece. So I feel that sometimes as a single, we can focus on the wrong things. I've done it myself. I truly, truly have. I'm not doing it now, but I've done it in the past. I've done it where I spent so much time focusing on, is this the guy? So much time, blah, 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 that I'm not even focusing or my, or I was focusing on God and my focus got off. You know what I'm saying? Some point, but my focus is back on the Lord and yours should be as well. When you are single, the Bible says in first Corinthians seven thirty four, an unmarried woman is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. And that goes for unmarried men and women. We should be devoted to the Lord's affairs and we should be sold out to him in our body and in our spirit. Titus 2, 6 says, similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. So while you're single, you should be working on your self-control. Our flesh wants everything. But the Bible lets us know that not everything is beneficial to us. Yes, you can do everything. But is it beneficial? I can go out right now down the street and go have sex with Sleazy Sam. But is it beneficial? <laughs> I'll be making up stuff. I'll be saying anything. But is it beneficial, y'all? I can go out right now and go drink till, I, till I'm falling over and, and run down the street naked. But is it beneficial? I can go and, and y'all get the point. I don't have to keep. Y'all get it. Is it beneficial? Our flesh wants everything. But as a single person, we don't give our flesh everything and anything that it wants. 
sure, like I said earlier, I would like some kisses and hugs and touches and rubs and some more stuff too. I have been practicing abstinence since 2014 and y'all, it's thousands of nights. Some nights I have literally cried for hours, balled up in the floor, shaking because I wanted to make love that bad. That I sat and got in the corner and balled up like a roly poly. Crying out to God, telling him, Lord, help me get this out of me. What is this? Please take it away at least until I'm married. Do something. This is too much passion. I am a passionate person in everything that I do. Even when I'm teaching and talking to y'all. I know y'all can tell in my voice. I'm passionate. And when you are born and have that much passion and you can't release it, it angers me. That's a whole nother story. Go off into anger. That's why I can't release my passion. I get angry. And now I got a little attitude with everybody. (laughs) You know? But I don't give my body what it wants. I could have called up an ex. I could have called up an ex-fiance and said, yo, you know what? This what it is. Let's go and do this. We're going to go back to ignoring it, not talking to each other. But at least I'm going to do this one one night. I could have did that. But it's foolishness. Why would I? When I know that I'm on the brink of getting the husband that God has for me. When I know I'm finna be married soon. Why in the world would I do that? Why would I disobey God? I'm loyal to God first. And as a single person, I feel like that is some of the things that we're missing. That they don't talk about. Our loyalty should be to God. And not just against evil people. Because you can know evil people when you see them. But what about against the person that comes and looks exactly like what you prayed for? And they may not be evil, but they're coming in your life. But God still has not approved them coming or approved them approaching you or or approved their DMs to you because they're not the one. It has nothing to do with people being demonic. You know, sometimes people are. I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes people are. And they are exactly sent by Satan for that time to destroy, distract, and to delay. But sometimes they're good people. I have met good men. And I'm like, God, are you sure? He would still say no. Even just recently. He was still, uh-uh. You know who you are. Don't you, don't you do that. You know that. You know better, Takaya. And I'm like, ah, God, I got to watch myself here with this man. This man is fine. This man is anointed. And he loves God for real. And I can see the glory on him. God like, uh-uh. You already know your situation. Don't even play. And I'm like, ah, okay, God. Let me go and get back focused. So I have wanted people and wanted things. But at the end of the day, if God ain't in it, what's the point of it all? Temporary satisfaction. Our flesh wants a lot of stuff. But we don't go around and giving our flesh everything that it wants. I don't go around doing whatever I want just because I want it. And that is what I feel the Bible is talking about when it says love does not seek its own When you truly love God, you don't seek your own way. You don't seek your own will. I remember a guy that I was dating and I had sat him down and talked to him and I told him, I said, hey, God is letting me know that you are not in the will of God for my life. We talked for a few weeks and he really, really was starting to fall for me. And I told him, I said, I've prayed. I've gotten confirmation. The Lord has literally spoke to me. Holy Spirit has spoke to me and let me know that you are not it. And I'm sorry, but I got to let this go. And this guy, although he claimed to be a professed Christian, and I'm sure he probably is. But in that moment, he did something that vexed my spirit greatly. And he chose me over God. He tried to choose. I wouldn't allow it. You're not going to make me no idol. I ain't going. He tried to get me over the voice and the will of God. And that was when I realized 100% that even if I had any doubt, I knew right then that he was not the husband that God had for me. Because God was not going to send me a man who made an idol out of me. God will never give us an idol. He will give us a wife. He will give us our husband, but he will never give us an idol, something or someone that we have placed in more importance than him. 
And I knew right then that that man did not really love me like he thought he did. May we never, ever love a person or a thing more than we love God. And may we never love someone so much that we can't hear clearly from God about them. That's not love. If you can't even hear God and what he's saying about them to you, y'all, that's not love. That has then become an obsession. It's become a thing. It's become a toy. It's become an idol. It's become an idol. And we have to watch ourselves from that because some people that God allows to come in our lives are literally test. But if you really love God, you will pass the test. And that's not always. I'm not going to say that you didn't love God just because you failed a test. No. But overall, at the end of it all, you will follow the Lord if you really love him. Because the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 14, I believe, if ye love me, this is Jesus talking, you would obey my commandments. Jesus doesn't understand love that's not fueled by obedience. And I know that's very bold to say, but if you love me, you obey me. Takaya, if I tell you no about this man, you're going to keep moving. Son, if I tell you no about this woman, you're going to let it go. Takaya, if I tell you to move to this city, I know you're going to do it because you trust me. You obey me. Daughter, oh my God, you're just making me so happy as your father. That is what God wants from all of us. Do you really love me more than these Or do you love me just for the moment when you pray and when you feel like you need something from me? Or do you love me just till I give you this and then you're going to abandon me as soon as I give it to you? Do you love the creation more than the creator? What is the point of it all? What is the point of your single season? That's what I want some of you to ask yourself. Because if you are in a damaged state and nobody's going to be perfect and you deserve to be loved even when you're damaged. And sometimes God will even give you your spouse even when you all of us have things to work on. We all do. I'm not perfect, but I strive for holiness. I strive to enter in at the narrow gate. And that's the difference between a true believer and somebody who's just saying they're a Christian, but they're still living any kind of way that they want. They go to church on Sunday, but there's no God in them. And you can tell. It's evident. They pull out God whenever they want a prayer to to get answered or whenever they want a husband or want a wife. But they ignore God the rest of the month. But as a believer in Christ Jesus, a true son and daughter of God, it's going to be evident in your life that you truly follow and care for God. And you will be rewarded for that. It may seem long before the reward comes. But uncommon warfare, uncommon waiting means that you just have an uncommon blessing. Ah! Oh, Jesus, I felt that. Yeah, the single season has been hard for me. Y'all, I've been single since 2014. Practicing abstinence, crying, screaming, angry at God even tried to go out on a couple dates myself and you will not believe the funny stories that happened one time a storm came through so bad out of nowhere as soon as I got to the restaurant I talk about it in my book purity over passion it's on Amazon and Kindle if y'all want to go check it out but I talk about this and a whole storm came through lights flickering on and off just like Spongebob said (laughs) the lights flickering on and off And this man texted me and told me, hey, we're going to have to reschedule. But I never called him and texted him again because I knew that that was my answer. I was sitting in a restaurant by myself and the Holy Spirit just touched my hand. Like he was sitting across the table from me and he said, Takaya, go home. Soon as I got in the car, the whole storm stopped. Do y'all hear me? You talking about supernatural intervening and interventions to keep me from getting out of God's will. Because of the prayers that I pray. And not only I pray, but my husband pray. And I'm going to hit across the top of the head as soon as we get married. (laughs) Because, baby, I ain't lying in some days. But you know what? It's all at the end of the day. I take that back. I'm just being silly. But it's all for the glory of God. It truly is. 
I'm covering him. He covered me. It's for the glory of God. Because at the end of the day, do I want a temporary satisfaction or do I want my God ordained spouse? Do I want a divorce? Or do I want marriage to my God ordained spouse? A marriage that the Holy Spirit, God, can literally breathe on because He's the one that put it together. The Bible says, What God joined together, let no one put asunder. There's a lot of relationships that God ain't putting together and He doesn't breathe on them. Neither does He give you peace in them because He's not in it. That does not mean that that person is evil or wicked. Sometimes, It is. I cannot lie to you because I have seen it myself. But sometimes it's just the person was not meant for you. They just weren't meant for you. And that's okay. That's okay. God is going to give you the best that he has for you. But one thing that we just have to keep asking ourselves is what's the point of it all? What's the point of it all? Our life is not for us it's for the glory of God it's for the story of God it's for the testimony of God's faithfulness and his character do y'all hear me when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt and going into the promised land all of those signs and wonders was for who it was for the glory of God to show the Israelites my faithfulness To show them I had your back the whole time and I still got your back. To show them bread coming from heaven. I'm feeding you. I love you. I'm with you even when it looks like I'm not. I gave you these 10 signs. The sons, the first sons of of Egypt dying. All of them with with the sea parting, with the plagues, with the frogs jumping all over everything. With fire coming down from heaven. With hell. All of that to show you that I'm on your side. It's for my glory. It's for my story. It's for my testimony to prove to you how faithful I am. But some of us get ourselves in situations and we don't allow God to show us his faithfulness. Some people will never see God's faithfulness because they keep getting in his way. Take your focus off of marriage. Take your focus off of the things of this world and put them on the God who created this world. Put them on him. He deserves that care. He deserves your love first. He's your first love. He deserves all of that. And he wants that from you. He wants it all today. Amen. So let's give him all. Let's give him all that we have while we can. Because as the Bible says, an unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord but guess what happens when you get married you have divided interests yes God's still first but you have a husband that you have to take care of you have a husband that you have to pray for and look out for and then you have children soon Lord's will and then it's just a whole family your interests will be divided God will still be first but there's you're still gonna have to give your time away to your family to rearing them up, to bringing your family up in the Lord under the care of your husband. So don't make marriage an idol, guys. And the point of it all, of your singleness, is for God to create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit with you. It's to clean you up and get you ready for the day that you will say, I do. And for some of you, it's coming really soon. Amen? For me, it's soon. But... There was a process that I had to go through before God said to Kaya, you're ready. Now you're ready. There was a long process. Some of y'all's might not be as long as mine. Some of y'all's might be a year or two years. But sometimes uncommon warfare and uncommon waiting happens because you have an uncommon blessing. Prepare yourself for what you pray for, okay? Obey the Lord, care for others, get wisdom, work on your talents and crafts, start walking in your purpose. And you don't need 500 million followers <laughs> to do that, amen? You can have five followers, you can have 5,000. You don't need followers to walk into your purpose. 
All you need is to be obedient to the will and the voice of God. But be wise in your singleness. Heal from trauma and rejection in your season of singleness. And as Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 says, present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Amen. Cut those soul ties and ask the Lord to keep you and help you walk upright. And he will. He will. Singleness is not a death sentence. Well, it is in a sense, but I'm saying not as in like dying, like as in a, oh, it's terrible. Not like that. It's a death sentence as far as maybe your physical desires, as far as maybe your mind and what you want to do. And you have to train yourself to obey God as far as that. But it shouldn't be like a death sentence, like it's dark, it's gloomy. I'm just going to stay in a room and wait till I get married and then my life will be happy. Marriage is not the end all be all. Okay, it simply ends one phase and starts another phase of your life. And you are simply sharing the person who you became in your singleness with your husband or your wife. So once again, that goes back to you as a whole individual. If you are still damaged, if you are still facing rejection and dealing with that and you have not healed from it, if you are still angry, if you are still bitter, if you are still lustful, you are going to be lustful, bitter, angry uh a uh, manipulative a narcissist except the only difference is you're gonna have a wedding ring on your finger <laughs> but you're still gonna be the same person that is why miserable individuals make miserable marriages it's not the institution it's not the covenant it's not even god it's you that determine how your marriage is gonna look and if you want to see how a marriage is going to look you look at the person's character now. Are they developing? Are they healing? Are they moving forward? Are they a light? Are they trying to walk upright? What are they doing now? Or is it all me, me, me? I, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. They're not really praying to God. Not really talking to God. Don't really have a relationship with God. But they're pretending to have a relationship with God to get you. Like, is it real? What is it all for at the end of the day? What is the point of it all? Because marriage is going to pull back the cover on who you became in your singleness. Whew, that's good. So if you became nothing, then marriage will reveal how much of nothing you became. If you didn't work on nothing, then marriage is going to reveal how much you didn't work on yourself. If you didn't heal from nothing, then marriage is going to reveal how much you didn't heal. It's not a magic wand. And I feel that sometimes people go into marriage with that idea and with that notion. And that's why a lot of those people who have that idea end up with a divorce. It's not a magic wand. Even if it's God ordained, you still have to do your part. You still have to work. But you work in your singleness so that when God brings you together with your God ordained spouse, and puts you in a kingdom marriage, it will last. But if you have ran from the molding process, if you have ran from being formed into a jewel, if you have ran from the pressure, if you have ran from the tough nights, if you have ran, ran, and escaped and slept with, with this guy and slept with that one to try to get over the holes in your heart that you didn't address from childhood, if you have ran from God's hand, woo, Jesus, ah! Oh, God, I felt that. Okay, Holy Ghost, I felt that. If you have ran from God's hand, then you will be an empty man when you're standing up before your wife or your husband. You will be an empty woman standing up on your wedding day because you ran. And you didn't allow God to mold you and to build you and to make you how he needed to make you. You didn't deal with the issues that you should have dealt with within your singleness and now marriage has revealed that about you so what is the point of it all right the point of it all as far as singleness goes is to work on yourself prepare yourself for what you pray for spend time with the lord Become who you are supposed to become. Walk in your gifts and your callings, whether you have five followers or 500,000. Be who God wants you to be. 
and know that at God's perfect timing, he's going to bring to pass the marriage that you have waited long for, the marriage that you have cried for, the marriage that you have prayed for. And it's going to be amazing and blow your mind. But make sure that you do your part and in your singleness become a much better version of you so that you can be presented to your husband or your wife how you're supposed to be. Fully whole, fully single, not still tied to four or five other people and your emotions and feelings are all over the place. That's not whole. Single defined as not one of several. You don't have several relationships that you're still dibbling and dabbling in. Uh Uh-uh. Single and whole. A thing that is complete all by itself. It's in one piece. That is the point of singleness. I pray that this video bless you all. And I'm going to get out of here. I did not mean to be this long. Um, And I also pray that, you know, you would obey the Lord in all things. That he would keep you and help you upright. And that, you know, you guys will truly, truly understand what the point of singleness is. It's not for all of these other things. It's not for dating frivolously, sleeping around frivolously. Um, And that's not to sexually shame anyone. I don't want to make it seem like that. But I have to be honest there because that's something that we really don't talk about. People just, they say what singleness is for and it's the date and it's the blah, 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 blah. and All of these things. But really, as you're dating so many multiple people and losing parts of yourself and every person that you date and not being healed. And instead of focusing on trauma, you're hopping in the bed with somebody. Then by the time your spouse does come, it's just, it can be a big mess, even when it's of God. So I'm telling you all of these things so that when real love comes not only will you recognize it but you will be healed in such a way that you won't run it away when it comes because sometimes when you are damaged and this is one thing that I know about trauma and being damaged and things like that you gravitate towards people who are unhealthy for you because you have not yet healed but when you heal in that area those people no longer can be of service to you And then you're able to see clearly what you need and who you need in your life. But as long as you're broken and people are playing and benefiting from your brokenness, then it's hard for you to see who you really need with you and to walk alongside of you for the rest of your life because you have a piece of yourself in them, a piece of them in you. It's just a little crazy when we don't work on ourselves and truly ask God, Lord, make me whole. And God's going to help you. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He's our comforter. But I just wanted to give you guys just that insight. Singleness is not for frivolous dating. It's not supposed. God already knows the spouse he has for you. Why would he make you date 25, 30 different women or men? He already knows who you're going to marry at the end. So I truly believe that that's some of the stuff that we get ourselves into. Some of those things we do on our own trying to force God's hand. And God like, "Uh uh-uh, you're going to meet your spouse this year. You're going to marry them that year. I already know that. If you would have came to me and asked me, I would have told you. But you wanted to do your own thing. So I backed up and let you do your thing. And that has happened. I know because it's happened to me. But then I went back and prayed. And I'm like, Lord, he like, I ain't say that was it. You you got lonely and did that yourself. You want my will now? Yes, God, keep me back in your will. Okay, well, let this go, you know. But sometimes we do those things. And then we sit up and say, God, why? God, why? And God is like, I ain't do that in the first place. That ain't had nothing to do with me. <laughs> so singleness is not, is this the one? Is, this she? is she or he? It's not <laughs> for all of that. It's not, y'all. It's to focus on the things of the Lord. And at the right time, as you're focusing on God, he just going to slide your spouse into your life real smoothly. In fact, He may even surprise you. (laughs) He may even surprise you. And you won't even be looking for it. And boom, there you go. But the point of it all of singleness is to prepare what you pray for. And if you skip the preparation process, you won't even be ready when what you pray for arrives. Let's not skip the preparation process. Let's get ready. Let's follow God. Let's focus on God. And know that in his perfect time, he's going to bring that thing, that dream, that promise, that person to pass in our life. 
I pray that you guys are blessed and I pray that um, this video bless you. Share it with other singles. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Love you all.